All right. So, hello, Acron. Yes, it's right. Hello, Acron fans. This is Shadow Fury 33 bringing you a casted game, an observed game on Chilled Gasket. This is a three-player map we haven't seen on the channel before. It has three different start locations: one in the southwest, one in the southeast, not currently used, and one in the north. Each expansion also has a sorry. Each main also has an expansion behind it and has expansions in between each base, as well as a high-value large cube plasma crate in the center. So it's a rather lower resource map than a lot of the maps I've built, and that was one of the intentions. It also is very open, you can access each main from three sides, making it a lot harder to defend, but actually that tends to be quite interesting, quite fun. The way Akron plays out, you don't really need to defend as much as you would in other RTS games, you don't need to have as much of a choke point because you can see the attacks coming and work from there. Anyway, to the players, we have in the north as Red, Rar, the Flying Toaster, who is a bit of a newer player, I haven't really seen him play much before, and Zero Shadows, who is definitely a newer player, he actually just randomly found this game while playing, he wasn't on the IRC channel, which is, for reference, hash Akron at irc.coldfront.net, he just happened to open the game and oh, find local host. sorry, not local host. that would be completely impossible. He found it just through the quick play, just randomly, joining the game, not quick play, through multiplayer, randomly joining the game. I apologize, I have been doing PHP programming all day. Anyway, we have the... and yes, I did use localhost, a lot. So, he is building up a standard economic start, while Rar the Flying Toaster is also building an economic start, and getting a very fast reef, so he's going for a fast tech build, as opposed to a quicker unit-heavy build. Possibly because he knows that Zero Shadows is new, he knows he can get away with going for fewer units in the early game and going for quick tech, quick chronoporting most likely, and then also quick advanced structures prior to that. Zero Shadows is also making use of the ability for RPs to get automatically placed. When you put them on a box, they will automatically get placed on the side of the RP box, although I think he's figured out by now that you're supposed to go beside the box, but it doesn't really matter. The game will automatically take care of that for you if you put it on the box par partially, which is a really nice feature. And he's also trying to build, he's also getting his importer up, but he's mostly focusing on getting RPs right now, so they'll probably end up going for mechs rather quickly. And the Arcticus from the, from Flying Toaster is going to scout out the base directly. This is Unusual. Most Greccan players will generally put their Arcticus right in front of their base to tank for any attacks coming in. And it's probably note we're actually in between the two players. I'm going to jump up to Zero Shadows, just double check what he's doing. He's definitely focusing on RPs. He doesn't have any importers yet. His Marine is going down to check out what's going on here and getting an expansion very quickly. While the Arcticus is coming in and will be spotting the base very quickly. However, from Flying Toaster's point of view, about half a minute down, he is. Arcticus has not moved yet. Actually, I think his Arcticus movement may have been undone. Yes, it was. Ultimately, his Arcticus movement will be undone as an Echo Scout, but he will see that it is here. He will see the fact that Zero Shadows is here and playing CISO. Zero Shadows does see it come in. We are about 30 seconds down from when we were before the 350 mark, just for reference. And we are going to be watching this happen. This won't be permanent. The Red Time Wave will carry that Arcticus not having come here at all. So that is complete Echo Attack. And the Marine is coming in here, and unfortunately got Oh my goodness. Okay. Anyway. <laughs> Going back, we see... Back about two minutes. We see that the Arcticus has landed here, as we expected before. So, just double-checking for Flying Toaster. We know that's going on here. And... Oh, I should probably drop that. And Flying Toaster has also started to build more Octos. Did he... I think he may have undone that reef construction that was earlier on... Bear with me here. We're at the 1 through 5 mark, you no reef. At the 4 minute mark, no reef. And at the 6 minute mark, you know what? I think that reef may have been un... No, it's... It was undone. Okay, the reef had been undone sometime on the red time wave. So the red time wave will carry that reef not actually having happened. So imagine that the Flying Toaster has no longer become confident that he will be able to get that reef up and running. He definitely has the resources to do it, so he's probably just not bothering to do it out of lack of confidence. Now, jumping up a bit, we see that Zero Shadow is getting to his expansion, and we'll be starting to build quite quickly. As Zero Shadow is time, about five minutes. This is about a minute up from when we were looking. And he has a couple of importers up as well, so he's getting, his reser he's getting reserves. He doesn't have any units starting to build yet. He really should get some factories. That will be very helpful. But both players are kind of playing it a bit slow. Jumping back about a minute, we see that the Flying Toaster... Actually, no, his reef was ultimately built. He did, he did end up building it again. He might have accidentally undone it 
on account of lack of energy. Now, a RP is coming in as well, rather odd placement, I don't know if he was a mistake or what, but it looks like he's... Yeah, he is trying to attack his Octo right here for some reason. I don't know why he's not just moving the Octo out of the way. RP is being built, like I said, rather odd placement. I'm confused as to his rationale in this one. But perhaps he is misclicking. While we see that Zero Shadow coming in with his expansion, this is the 442 mark. The expansion started up at about the 5 minute mark. We see he doesn't have any production structures yet, but he is also focused further in the future, jumping up about a minute and a half to catch up to him. We see he has three importers and a factory is coming up. Four importers, actually, and a factory coming up. So three or four factories and a couple armories would be a really good idea right about now. Get a nice little mix of infantry and vehicles, and then send them up to go for a really powerful direct attack. The reef has been built, and machinery is being upgraded. So early machinery is has been upgraded now for Zero Shadow. This is at the 632 mark. Back at the 6 o'clock mark at the present, we see that Octopods are being built. Advanced structures and low legal class, okay. Advanced structures and low legal class were upgraded. Advanced structures at about the 4.45 mark. Low legal class will be upgraded probably immediately after, which would be at about the 5.30 mark. And so at the 5.45 mark or so, we'll see it's done. The Octopod has been built, and no Aspire though, so... At this point, he can't build any air units to complete that triad to actually get the legal class units, but once he gets the spire, he will be able to get a Sepi pod and a Faro pod and use them to make legal class units. While the expansion is up now for Zero Shadow, and the Marine is unfortunately stuck in between the RPs, but that can be easily remedied, just move him out of the way. Just gonna fast forward up a bit to the present. And the spire has been built, so the spire is being built at the 610 mark, finished at the 610 mark for. The Flying Toaster, another Octopod has been built as well, and more Octos for RPs or just general defense. No for RPs. So RPs are being built for the Octos, and no more RPs in the main base, thankfully, for Zero Shadow, because that's quite a few RPs. 10 RPs, in, sorry, not 10 RPs. That's 10 RPs on LC, or 9 RPs on LC, 6 on QP. So that's going to exhaust very quickly, though. He can quickly move them off to the back backyard expansion, so it's not a big deal. And another armory being built. The factory has not been used yet, but this is not the focus time for Zero Shadow. That focus time is, in fact, the 8 o'clock mark right now, about 30 seconds above the present, or up from the present, I should say. And 30 seconds up from the present, we see that the backyard expansion is being taken as well. So... Definitely going for a lot of resources, not a lot of production capacity, and that's going to be his downfall if he doesn't remedy that shortly. Faropod has been built with the Sepipod, or the Octopod and the Sepipod as well. Faropod, however, in progen position. Back to the present, about 30 seconds down, we see that the Sepipod is in progen position, but no legal class units are being built at the moment. If that happens, though, it will be very swift, swift death for Zero Shadow, and unfortunately he doesn't realize his Marine is a bit stuck, rather caught between the resource processor and the crate, I'm afraid. I'm going to actually check that crate placement. I'm pretty sure the crates are right next to each other, so it shouldn't be a big deal. But yeah, unfortunate placement. I think he got his RP right outside and his Marine is just stuck, but no point dwelling on that. What there is a point dwelling on is this triad here. When it's going to start building legal class units and what legal class units is going to build. I imagine a Sepi Ligo. Yes, there we are. Sepi Ligos are coming and they will be very powerful. They are a great fighter bomber unit. Most effective against air, but they are also very powerful against ground. They have a 53 damage per 5 second. Well, about 12 damage per second. No, less than that. 11 damage, 10.6 damage per second against ground versus, well, fire pods in progen mode, so we can't check it right now. But. Actually, when is the fire pod? To compare, the fire pod has 89 versus ground. That is just, that is the dedicated bomber. The octopod has 56 versus ground, and that is a dedicated ground unit. So the Sepi Ligo is as powerful against ground as octopods are. But it's also a higher tech unit, harder to corona port, and definitely harder to get to because of the fact that you need to sacrifice, at least temporarily, progen for progening some pod class units. Now, anyway, back up. Sorry about that little digression. Back up to the present, we see at the 9 minute mark, two Sepi Ligos have been completed, and two more Sepi Pods are on the way. Definitely worry about air units. An Octopod has actually come in here. That would have started attacking at about the 9 minute mark, from the looks of it. Yeah, roughly around that point. The 9 minute mark is when it started attacking. So we're about 30 seconds down from the present at the 9 minute mark. The present is the focus point of the Flying Toaster, while it looks like Zero Shadow is about 30 seconds above the present. His RPs have been completed, completely exhausted. 
they are having to move away. Mechs are being built in the factories. I'm a bit surprised no other units have been built. And this is his focus time. I don't know where he is actually focusing in terms of his camera. It looks like he's focusing on moving these spec ops over to try to deal with his Octobot. It won't last long, though. He is building units, obviously, though he does have more than one spec op. His mechs aren't going to be the most useful against these Octopods, but they will be useful against the Sepi Legos and Sepi Pods once they come in. Now, jumping back about 30 seconds, we see at the 10-17 mark, that Sepi Pods and Sepi Legos have already come in. They actually would have come in from the, looks like the 9.45 mark. No, the 10 minute mark actually is when they started moving forward. So they'll be here by the 10 minute, 10 second mark. The mechs are gonna be somewhat useful against these guys, but they aren't gonna be the most useful. More factories, much more factories are gonna be necessary. Gonna have been necessary. Go back here, build more factories. Right now, Zero Shadow, you have plenty of resources. You can definitely afford it. And you have full chrono energy too, so you can definitely afford it. The chrono energy being right here. So the Octopus coming in, and Sebi Pod, Sebi Ligo. Sebi Ligo is being the biggest damage dealer right now. These RPs will not be able to get out alive. For the focus point, about 40 seconds up. This is going to be a bit of a jump. The focus point does not see any real damage dealers right now. Tornod is being built with some with a Lancer and a tank. The Armory... The Armory is actually upgrading Gate Tech. Not a bad idea, except for the fact that this Red Timeway brings destruction. And that is going to be deal hard to deal with. The Sebi Pods have been killed, though, looks like by the mechs. The Max will have killed them about the 11 minute mark, and here we are, it's the 10.55 mark, so in about 5 seconds they will start attacking and likely deal with the Semipods, as we did not see the Semipods further in the future. However, the Spec Ops will not be able to last long, like I said, against the Octopods. The Semipods will not be able to last long against the Max. One of the Semipods has gone down, the other Semipod is going to be going down right now. So both Semipods down, but the Semi Legos will be able to get out of this, because the Octopod is covering the ground for them, and even then, like I said, the Semi Legos are as strong against ground as Octopods are, just slightly weaker. Thus, not a big deal. Now, a Tornod coming in, it will not last long against the Sepipods, but it might be able to deal with this Octopod if the Sepipods are distracted. However, I doubt that will be the case. If we jump back, just checking at Zero Shadow's focus time, we see that... He, actually, probably go the same time rate. He is actually trying to attack a bit more with dedication, trying to protect those RPs with his special ops, but it won't be doing much good. Trying to attack the Octopod directly won't be dealing enough damage to actually deal with it properly, and the mechs are a bit delayed. It looks like the mechs actually have been cancelled slightly. The armory being destroyed, not the one researching gate tech, mind you, that was this one down here, which isn't going to research it for another minute or so. We're at the 1053 mark again, and the mech is attacking directly. However, Zero Shadow realizes that his position is a highly untenable one, and he will not be likely to get anywhere in this game right now. Flying Toaster jumping back about 15 seconds to double check this attack. I should have mentioned at the same time, he is going for expansions, he is going for his backdoor. His main expansion, actually, the 11 minute mark has been completely drained. Getting a lot more Seppies as well, and more Farpods, Seppipods, Octopods. While the Seppipods and Octopod are dealing with everything that's here right now. And Gatech isn't even being researched. It, no, it is right now. 11 <laughs> right as I said, it wasn't being researched, it is. How about that? So yeah, Gatech is being researched. This is the 11, 12, 11 minute, 12 second mark being researched. The importers are being destroyed very heavily, however, the RPs are distracting Flying Toaster's units, so that might actually buy... I don't know if it'll buy any time. There's a lot of chrono energy being used. The mechs are actually going around. It looks like they're going around to just get out of the main base. Avoid conflict entirely as opposed to flank. Nope, they are coming around to flank. I was thinking they'd be coming around to flank, but I wasn't 100% sure given that they were leaving the base first. So it looks like they're coming around to flank. A Tornod is being built. A Lancer, as we saw before, the Tornod Lancer tank. Like I said, more factories. Really, Zero Shadow could have had a chance if he just made more factories. More factories. More factories and armories. When you're playing CISO, you gotta play it like you play StarCraft. Build a lot of production centers. Build a lot of units. Don't be shy about spending your resources. I know there is obviously the undermining effect where your opponent can go back in time and damage your RPs. But, really, use your resources. Build factories. Build armories. You want to have three or four at least in the early game and six or seven in the late game. And of course, get Macrofabs as well. And now the Octopod is going down, however, that is the big ground damage dealer other than the Sepi Legos. The Lancer will try to come up to deal with these Sepi Legos, but right now is when the mechs would be most useful. They are, however, trying to get rid of these RPs that the Flying Toaster is sending. This is at the 12 minute mark. Flying Toaster is actually up at the 1335 mark, about a minute and a half up from when we were looking. And fast forwarding along, getting more Octos to the main base. This will not last long at all for Zero Shadow. The Octos are coming in and will be dealing a lot of damage. By the time they hit back at Zero Shadow's time, about 12.10 mark, we see that Zero Shadow is actually going straight into the base. This won't. This is not going to work at all. 
The next are trying to just walk into the base. They are trying to waltz in and they will not be able to last because, like I said, they're mostly anti-air units and there's a lot of anti-ground units, a lot of Octos coming in here, which will be able to deal with everything once they get through. While the Tornados and Sepulegos, sorry, Sepulegos and Sepulegos are dealing with whatever is going to be hanging around in this base. The tank coming in. Tanks are generalist units. They will be able to deal with the units that are being sent by Flying Toaster if there were about half a dozen of them, at least. Unfortunately, there is one, and it will not be able to deal with this. Like I said, more factories, and a Lancer is being built as well. No harassment yet, actually. The Lancer might actually help out. Not by much. Five or six more Lancers would be nice. But Flying Toaster isn't even worried about this. He actually doesn't even have Chrono Cording in the future. He just has a bunch of Octos attacking the base directly. He does have Chrono Cording in the future, my mistake. He did get it. Didn't update quite as I jumped in. And he will be able to chronoport back if he wants to. Really at his leisure. The whole timeline under, is under his control. He has perfect causal structure. I don't see him really losing this game at this point. I haven't been seeing him losing this game since about the 5 minute mark. But still, good try by Zero Shadow. Interesting play on the part of trying to get the fast tech. And now some the Progen tried actually. Has chronoported away. And yes, so we see that Zero Shadows has lost. So Flying Twister has won. Well done, Flying Toaster, though that was a bit of an easy game. So, I hope you enjoyed that. Not the most exciting I've played, but definitely interesting game showcasing some newer players in our community. So, thanks for watching, and have a good night.